Hey, welcome back to another RC Wars video. Today we're going to show you how to install a sink without using a drain, which really is in part truthful, but really a sink without a drain is just a bowl. Uh, we're going to show you how to install a sink basically anywhere where you don't have drainage that's below the level of the sink, so it's going to drain out naturally. We're going to show you how to do that using this type of pump rather than using a sump basin or some other catch basin that's going to take the liquid and pump it up. Uh, so this little pump here actually just goes right on the bottom of the sink drain and what it does is when the water's running and you get some water in the sink, it's going to start pumping and empty that sink out for you. All right, so when it comes to these sink drain pumps, this particular unit uh, is capable of lifting a maximum of about 12 feet and producing a maximum of about 40 gallons per minute. So I wouldn't recommend using this if you've got a lift greater than roughly 10 feet and still expect a reasonable amount of flow. At about eight feet, you're gonna get about 20 gallons a minute, which is gonna produce way more than what your sink is gonna produce, which is why it's handy that it includes this ball valve. The nice thing about this ball valve, once you get this installed on the bottom of the sink, you can incorporate this ball valve into the discharge and uh, have it partially closed. And you can adjust this to match your incoming flow of water. And then you can keep the pump running so it's not cycling on and off as you're sitting here trying to use the sink. So very handy that it comes with this. A couple other things that you're gonna need. Uh, this is not included, this is just a nipple and a union. We're gonna use a union on here so that we can easily disconnect the pump anytime we need to service it. It comes with this small screen that just goes in the drain here and uh, that just drops right into place. This prevents solids larger than what the pump can actually handle from getting into the pump and causing any damage. And then the only other thing you're gonna need to pick up is some Teflon tape, which is pretty inexpensive and, and uh, easy to find in most places. So this pump here is equipped with a diaphragm switch, as you can see right here. And uh, the way that that operates is the water pressure or the weight of the water above the pump act, uh, pushes down on that switch and activates the pump so that once the water is gone, the diaphragm switch is gonna release and the pump's gonna turn off. The diaphragm switch operates on a simple piggyback switch, uh, as you can see here, so that if need be, that diaphragm ever to work to go bad on you, you could replace that pretty easily. And the way that those piggyback switches work is the switch just plugs into the pump power and then that plugs into your wall outlet, which is gonna allow that switch to interrupt power to the pump. If you wanted to run it continuously, you could just bypass the switch and plug the pump in directly. But I wouldn't recommend doing that and leaving the pump running unless you are actually running water. So let's get to the installation. So at this point, you're just gonna to wanna to put your screen in here to make sure you're protecting the pump. You see it fits in there really nicely and, and doesn't pop out easily. All right, so right now we're just gonna go ahead before we get under the sink and get all of our fittings situated. Now, if you are using a union, I like to make it so that the portion that you unscrew is right here. So this will be attached to the drain. You don't have any parts to worry about there. And then this will come off and make servicing that O-ring if you ever need to a lot easier. Again, another nice thing about using in union is I'll be able to get everything plumbed up without having to be under the sink. And then all I've got to do is take this fitting here, attach it to the drain, and we're ready to go. All right, so now we're just threading this on here. Now, generally when I'm working with PVC, I try to just use my hands for tightening because it's really easy to over tighten things and cause cracks and splits down the road. And the best thing to do is once you get everything installed, water test it. If you don't have any leaks, don't worry about it. If you do have a slight leak, then you can go back with a wrench or something and just give it uh, an eighth to a quarter of a turn or until the leak stops. If the leak's persistent, you may have to pull it off and redo the Teflon tape, but normally just hand tight is sufficient when you're working with plastic. So we've got the union half installed. Now we're ready to bring the pump in. Now you'll notice I did put a riser pipe on this and the reason is this diaphragm, it does need a certain amount of water weight above it to activate the pump. We could install it without that riser pipe, but there's, you, have to run, you would have to run more water in the sink before the drain actually kicked on. So what this does is just allows the pump to kick on a little bit sooner without having to run quite as much water. So we just put this union together here. Now 
And now we're ready to hook up our discharge to anything we want. This pump has an inch and a quarter discharge, so we could run that up to the uh, ceiling to, uh, to hook into the main drainage system if we were installing this in a basin, or if this was going in a cabin or somewhere, you could plumb this to go outdoors and use this sink for your dishwashing and uh, relatively clean water application. So tons of options, tons, tons of things that you could do with this, and all it needs is a 120 volt outlet for operation, and you would just use that plug and plug it in and away you go. So now we've got the plug, we can plug it in and all done. So you can see having this system eliminates the need for a bigger basin or a catch basin of any kind. And you could potentially install a sink just about anywhere without having the proper drainage because this pump can move that water wherever you need it to go up to, like I said, about 10 feet. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thanks for joining us today. And don't forget new videos Tuesdays and Fridays. Like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. We'll see you next time.